Hello, I'm JW, and today another unsafe and unwanted piece of equipment here. It's another one of these testing uh, screwdriver jobs. Now, I saw one of these a while ago, which was the red one, which just had the little uh, display in the middle. This one has a nasty extra feature, and it has some kind of blue illumination inside. So uh, let's have a look at this one and see how craptacular it actually is. Now, this is another Direct From China item. It's under this Orban uh, label here. And this is apparently a uh, super quality item. It says so right here on the Pag Excellent Experiences. And Orban will be the most successful tools brand in the world. Good luck with that. Now, uh, in terms of this actual device, it's very similar to uh, a number of others of these. They seem to be a, one of these generic things that's sold under various different brands. Various text on the front here, mostly non-English. And as with the other one, we've got the two buttons here, one of which was marked direct and the other one was marked inductance on the previous example, neither of which seemed to make a huge amount of difference. Single metal prong at the end there. And uh, in this one, it's got a little uh, indicator here, which actually lights up. And uh, as before, it's 12 to 220 volts, AC or DC. And that's uh, pretty much all there is to that. Card here tells you uh, supposedly where it came from and the website on Alibaba if you want to uh, go there and buy a load of them. So uh, there we have that. And it says power with all my heart. Hopefully that doesn't mean power through your heart because uh, that's the kind of thing that could happen if you're going to be using one of these devices because bearing in mind it's putting your main voltage here and your finger on this metal bit here. And whatever's inside is the only thing preventing you from basically placing your finger on the mains connection. Now, in terms of this working, uh, let's just see if we can get it to operate. This is a uh, mains item here. We've got the shutters in the socket there, so we can poke this in with relative safety. And if we poke it in there and put our finger on it, we can see the little symbol appears on the display. So that's uh, pretty much the same as we had on the other one. And the top one doesn't do anything. Now, this is going to be quite difficult to see, but uh, inside this little window here, there is actually a light which lights up in a blue colour. So I'll just uh, turn off the main lighting. Hopefully we can get a sight of that. Now here's the thing there, so I'm not actually touching the uh, contact at the end. And if I uh, put my finger on the contact, we can see that that sort of blue glow comes out from inside. Uh, I'll just show you that even more. We can hopefully see that uh, blue coming through the little round window. And it also shines blue on the liquid crystal display as well. Now this is horribly, horribly dim because say, this room now is pretty much dark apart from that little light uh, just behind. So in any kind of normal circumstances you would not be able to see this blue illumination. So uh, a fairly useless addition. And as with the other one, if uh, in theory you put your finger here and the uh, actual voltage displays on the thing there, we've seen that before. We're not going to test it this time because that's fairly unsafe and this one is not a nice laser transformer. So obviously uh, I don't wish to be killing ourselves. Well, let's get inside this thing and see what's uh, happening in there. Now we've got a screw here on the back, so uh, go in there straight away and see what we can find. Now I would imagine it's going to be very similar to the other one, but obviously there's the addition of this uh, blue light thing going on. Now is that going to uh, release the thing? Apparently not. No, it's probably the uh, screw under there we had before, so can we uh, move this clip somehow? Yep, there we go. And just another screw on the top. So let's get that out also. And the problem with these devices is not the fact that they're necessarily uh, unsafe, because in presuming it's made correctly, then it's uh, relatively uh, safe to press this here. The main problem with these devices is the fact that they're just so unreliable. You've got this thing where it's supposed to sort of detect things without being in contact. And even when you're in contact with it, there's a whole load of factors which could affect whether it actually displays things or not. Just the same as those manky old neon screwdrivers and all that other business. And of course, as usual on these videos, there's going to be 100 people rush in and say that they've been using them for 50 years with no problem whatsoever. And it's absolutely splendid and marvellous. Well, good luck with that, because in reality, even when these things do work, they're not actually telling you anything. You couldn't find out by using proper test equipment anyway. So anyway, what have we got inside then? So we have the circuit board here, and of course we've got some batteries at the top here, just three uh, little uh, round batteries there, because obviously you have to power the uh, blue lamp with something. And bearing in mind, it lights up when you're not even in contact with the circuit. And although that's probably enough just to get a little uh, LCD segment on, clearly it's not going to uh, illuminate a presumably a blue LED. 
So let's just uh, get this out of here and get more screws. Actually, three screws in here. That seems rather excessive considering it's just this microscopic little uh, circuit board we're talking about. Nevertheless, we'll uh, remove them. This again is a very cheap item, it's only a couple of dollars delivered, so no actual uh, cost really involved there. So just uh, pry this out. So this is uh, basically the case there, so just got the two metallized plastic buttons. Little transparent window there, obviously with the light to shine through. And then at the bottom here, we've got this uh, strange rubbery item here. And there's the pin, of course, from the screw piece that goes through. And that is actually pressed fairly well on the back of that. Here's the circuit board. So it's very similar to the other one. All we've got on the back are just a couple of uh, tracks there, one up to the top here and one through. Got this bit of sort of randomly bent wire, which obviously is what attaches to the actual probe thing at the bottom. And then, as we had before, it's just a uh, sort of resistor chain here, so it just divides up the voltage and switches on the appropriate segments as the voltage is, of course, higher. In addition to on this one, of course, we have the battery terminals at the top here, just these two uh, metallic contacts, little tiny resistor. This is the LED, the sort of blue one there. And then we've got here, which is presumably a couple of transistors, which will turn on the LED when the uh, actual threshold here is reached. So it's just using a sort of basic uh, amplify and on off switch. So again, a very simple and uh, relatively crude device. And again, as with the other one, bearing in mind, there's not a great deal between you and the mains voltage. So these are the pads for the two little uh, buttons on the front. So you're totally relying on the actual uh, circuit board track clearances. And of course, whatever uh, resistances and whatever are in series with you and the main supply. If you crystal display, same as before, little uh, zebra strip on the back. And then there's a bit of random uh, plastic here, which is just being used as a spacer on the back, just to uh, of course, see with that correct depth. It's obviously just been a way bit of waste or something that's been cut out of some other panel there. And uh, then in the case itself, it's just got that extra hole for the LED to shine through there. Now, this black piece here is certainly interesting. That was actually over the pin at the bottom here. And as we saw in the other design, it was just a bit of wire shoved there. So that actually fits over that. Now, you would imagine that this is going to be some kind of conductive rubber because it sort of fits in there. And then the wire is basically pressing on the back of that. So that wire just bent over the end like that. And you can see the indentation on the back, and then on the front of it we've got the round indent where the uh, pin has been shoved in. So this is presumably some sort of conductive material. It's sort of a uh, fairly bendy, flexible type of stuff. So let's just measure the resistance of that. So I've just got the resistance uh, thing here, so let's turn that to resistance there. So yeah, pretty much zero when those are on. So let's just see what we actually get here. Okay, so measuring across it there, we're getting uh, in the region of sort of 15k ohms or something. It seems to be uh, fluctuating a bit, as you'd expect. Let's go from one side to the other. So again, we're getting sort of 20k, and it depends on how hard we press as to what we're actually getting. So we can get it down to less than 1k ohm. And if we just release the uh, pressure a bit, it obviously varies quite considerably. So this is some sort of conductive rubber material. And of course, depending on uh, the exact thickness of it, we're getting various different readings. If we go across the width of it, yeah, sort of 400k across the uh, dimension there, just about uh, seven millimeters or so there. Let's try it on the side. Yeah, it's about 40k that way. So uh, it does seem to be rather variable. Now, it's not totally clear why they've used that because the other one didn't actually have that. It just had a bit of wire stuffed onto that and had uh, probably an extra resistor on the board. I mean, there's plenty of space on there to put um, extra resistors, and we've already got the chain of them anyhow. So quite a uh, bizarre device there. I mean, that may add a slight effort of uh, extra safety, but bearing in mind, it's only a few K ohms, so it's going to limit the current to a certain extent, but it's still going to be a fairly unpleasant shock, even if it was in the sort of 10K kind of area. So uh, 
may improve the safety of it slightly, but I'd say all the disadvantages of these things still apply, whether it's uh, safer or not. So that's the Orban branded testing prong. Now, not a very good device, but uh, marginally better than that red one we saw. And it's got that sort of conductive rubber type thing between the actual prong and the circuit board. And of course, that red one we saw just had a basically a direct connection straight through. So in that one, all that was protecting you from the mains was the surface mount resistors on the board. That's certainly not something to be relied on. That may say maybe marginally safer, but in reality, it's not really that safe at all because it's only a, say, a single resistor. Those things, of course, can fail or slip out of place and bang like that's just uh, shoved together with random bits of wire. Who knows what's inside unless you uh, actually open it and have a look. So uh, not quite as bad, but still uh, very poor. And even if it's uh, wonderful inside, those devices are horribly unreliable. So not something that's recommended to use for any purpose. So that's it for this time. And until next time, thanks for watching.